Hello everybody, what's up? You're listening to I Was Just Wondering with Tom Salmon, a podcast that dives into music, film and games and everything else in between. My guest on this week's episode is Nick Sadler, a producer and talent executive at First Fights Media, which is part of the Goldfinch Group, a London-based film, television and video game production company. First Flights has just launched a new short film fund that supports emerging filmmakers to create bold and ambitious short films with the potential to be developed into feature film projects for a global audience. We jumped into Nick's experience working with filmmakers to financially support and market their films to a global audience. Why he thinks short films are so important for an emerging filmmaker's career and what are his top tips and advice for applying for the First Flight Short Film Fund. So, if you're running, stuck in a traffic jam, or sitting behind a desk at work, hope you enjoy my interview with Nick. Hello and welcome to the podcast. We're here to talk about the newly launched First Flight's Short Film Fund and the uh, application process. Um, so just before we jump into all that, um, can you tell me who you are and what do you do? Yeah, uh, thanks Tom for having me on the show. My name is Nick Sadler and I am from First Flights Media Limited, which I run with my colleague Keith Kehoe, and that falls under the Goldfinch uh, umbrella company, uh, which is a uh, film funding and production company. So uh, First Flights, uh, we work with emerging filmmakers to make their first feature film, um, and our budgets are um, on anything under a million pounds. The short film fund we've launched though, because we were coming across so many talented directors um, that we wanted to work with. And, you know, in reality, we can really only, you know, probably do two or three feature films a year. And Mm. we wanted a way to kind of have a development uh, arm, I guess, within first flights. And so we thought the short film fund would be a great way to do that. Short films has been like, it's an untapped resource, I think, to the wider uh, public in a way, because obviously like features and television, that's very at the sort of forefront. But in terms of short Mm. films, um, there is a massive amount of short film festivals um, and awards, but that work um, seldom gets seen. So why do you think that short films are so important for launching filmmakers' career? Um, And will you be doing more to try and get more short films out there to the more sort of general public? Yeah, I mean, I always say a short film, a director should make a short film to highlight or illustrate a particular talent or um, style that they want to showcase for a feature film. Um, I don't think anyone should just make a a feature film just because they want to make a feature film. Mm -hmm. Um, But of course, I'm very always business uh, orientated uh, with this. So, uh, So with that in mind, you know, that's, that's how we want to have a, um, you know, the, uh, if someone is approaching making a short film is why are they doing it? And that, and that is why it is an important part. It's in some ways, it's almost like a very, very, very big business card to say, Hey, look, look what I can do. Because, you know, when it comes to, uh, investing in a filmmaker to make a feature film, there's a, you know, you are, you're talking at about minimum six, 700,000 pounds. If you're going to be uh, which is, you know, close to about a hundred thousand American dollars, you know, to do something that's decent, that's going to sell, that's, you know, got potential to actually make some money. And that's an awful lot of money to, to invest in someone that has, has, you know, got an unproven track history. Mm. And a short film is a way of illustrating uh, for a director or, or a producing team to say, Hey, we can do this in the short form. And also it's a great way, I believe to, create something which you can, uh, from the business point of view, from a, a producer or an exec producer point of view, you can go to sales agents and say, hey, check out this artist, uh, check out this director, check out the story. Here is, it's almost like a pilot for the feature. You know, and people can mm-hmm. see something visual, they can get behind it, they can go, yeah, cool, I get it. And, uh, and they're more likely to invest in the project. Um, and, you know, to answer your second question on how are we, how are we gonna get more short films out there? Um, you know, that is a, it's, it's a, it's a tough, it is tough to get it out there because trying to make money off short films can be difficult. It can be done, but it is difficult. And, you know, I've talked to a few short film festival directors and, you know, they sort of, you know, the general consensus is most of the audience for short films are other short filmmakers and other filmmakers and trying to go beyond that, 
market and, and go beyond that audience to the mainstream, you know, I, th- I think is always going to be challenging. Uh, Quibi, 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 um, which is launched yes. in the States, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, they're, they're, I mean, they're doing super high end stuff, but they're putting their money on the fact that people are going to want to watch these short films. And it's something, um, another part, another part of the Goldfinch business is Bird Box Films, which mm-hmm. is a streaming platform which was launched earlier this year. Um, we're just going through a rebrand at the moment. Um, but a big part of that is to have a short film channel and to showcase those short films as well. And, you know, we're, and we're looking at different models. Most likely what we'll do is we will package up, say, three short films into, a, into an experience that people will watch and they can sit back and watch it. I'm just curious from your own sort of professional background, did you start off in a production role and then work your way up or was it more you were in the sort of business sort of finance sort of side of film? Uh, it was a little bit of both. So I uh, traditionally worked in music for most of my life um, and uh, managing music artists and record labels. And so I had a lot of success there. Then I uh, was looking to expand my horizons and uh, a friend who was who was directing music videos for our record label um, wanted to create a feature film and so uh, he approached me and I had uh, I had some time on my hands and we decided to get into um, a film production I guess and that was the first film which was uh, Pandorica so I kind of came on and, and there's an indie production film so you're wearing many hats right. um, and that's how I got involved in the production side but you know, my my area where I do lie is probably more on the business side. Um, you know, the raising money, the marketing, how you sell the actual film. Um, so less of actually being on the ground and, uh, you know, I guess, you know, holding or directing camera and more on the, you know, taking that story and taking it to a huge wide audience and getting as many people to connect with that story as possible. And I'm just sort of, sort of curious as well in terms of, for you, what makes a great short film and for you, could you sort of like name maybe some some short films that have really sort of grabbed you sort of recently, perhaps? Yeah. Um, so I, personally, I like a short film that, I, I mean, this sounds a bit silly, but, the, you know, I don't want to fast forward or I don't want to just stop watching. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's captivating me. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I think that's probably what most people would want to see in any form of entertainment. I do like ones where there's the twist at the end, you know, and you're going, where is this going? And, and you're sort of, you're captivated, like what's going on here. Those are the ones that I do like the most. Uh, and, and I do find those are the ones that do tend to go, that, that do tend to do quite well. Um, there's a, guy, a director called um, Richard Pentagast, Pintig- I think I'm saying his name, mm-hmm. uh, who did a film called Sylvia, um, which was great, which was a perfect example of this. Um, it's a story about, uh, it's like a, almost like a mini road trip. See this mother and her daughter and her, and the, the mother's mother. So the granddaughter's, the granddaughter's grandmother. Yeah. The three generations of these, uh, of these, uh, ladies and they're in this car and they're going on this trip and you're sort of, you know, you're not really sure what's going on and they're talking about stuff and whatnot. Um, and it turns out that the car is being, they're having to sell the car because they don't have enough money and, and, you know, and whatnot. And so it's going through the story and then she gets the place that to drop the car off to sell it. And she's saying, Hey, look, it's really, um, you know, this means a lot to me. And, and and you're like, where's this, where's this all going? And then you realize that there's, there's the whole time there was actually no, she was in the car by herself. And the reason why she's selling it is because her mother and her daughter died in a car accident. And, and that's, right. you know, and, and that's the whole kind of thing. And that's why it means so much to her. Or, or, or did they die in a car accident or they, or they died, you know? And mm-hmm. so you realize the whole time she was just going through these memories as she was dropping this car off. And it's very, very moving with a great twist at the end. So, yeah. you know, that that's a perfect example of a great short film. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, and it showcased, you know, the, the, the director, the, his kind of angles and the story that he wanted to tell as well. And as it turned out, it was actually based on a true story, which gave it, I personally gave it sort of like another, like another level of, uh, of wow as well. Um, and where did you see that uh, particular film? So that curious, was it a, a film festival or was it online? Uh, the director sent it to me. Yeah. You know what? I'm actually, no, it's one of, has it one of, I'm just checking that it's actually, available public or I haven't just kind of wrecked the whole synopsis. I'm almost a hundred percent sure 
it's uh, it's out there available. Uh, if it's not, though, we might have to re-edit this. Okay, bit. yeah, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's an interesting point you raised there because the curious thing about film festivals, and I've spoken to a fair few sort of short filmmakers, is mm-hmm. that once you submit your short film into the festival circuit, it potentially could be tied up for a year, year and a half um, before you can actually distribute that online because the festivals want that exclusive and then it will go on the run of, um, you know, uh, to Mm -hmm. qualify for Oscars sort of potentially. So they are kind of sort of stuck in this sort of like loop where it is very hard to actually, even if you made an award-winning short film, there's very few places actually to sort of see it um, when it's got that sort of heat or currency on it, should we say? Yeah, I I think the way you have to approach that is you just have to factor that time into a, a film's life cycle and you just have to go, you know what, I'm, yeah, this film is not going to be publicly available for the next 12 months, but it's because I'm, I'm trying to get awards for it, which will ultimately add more value to it. So, you know, when I do want to um, potentially sell it or put it on um, sale or get it picked up um, somewhere, it, it has, it, you know, it inherently has more value and and will do better for you in the long run. And, and if you look at it that way, mm. then, and you sort of go, well, I'm going to to do three short films and you sort of know that one of them isn't going to be available for 12 months, but you can be working on another one that then, you know, what 12 months after that will be made available, you know, over a three or four year um, period, you're going to be making sure you've got content out there and pushing you as a filmmaker. Um, and, 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 you know, I, I'll actually say there was, you know, the first feature film we did, we, we skipped the whole, uh, we just, uh, we skipped the whole, uh, festival circuit right. and we just wanted to get the film out there and we did it and, and whatnot. But in hindsight, I've actually learned, you know, even with, with a short or a feature, you just have to factor in those, the, you have to factor in the whole mm. festival season and, and try and get those awards because, you know, they, if you do get awards, they do help um, with, you know, the marketing and publicity and they do um, add value as well to the, um, to the film, which ultimately leads to more sales. And also, I guess the nice thing about film festivals is being sat in the audience watching a film and you, as we've sort of spoken about, you can connect with other filmmakers and producers and potentially get more work uh, from that as well. Yeah, festivals are an amazing place to just, yeah, connect with other filmmakers and people in the industry. And, you know, I mean, in any festivals in any kind of um, industry are great for that. You know, you can't beat the personal connection of, of being around people you know, probably more so now in, uh, mm. uh, in this COVID-19 environment that we're in. Uh, we're probably all kind of missing out on that a little bit. Um, so I'd just like to jump in with you in terms of the specifics of the film and just go over a few different sort of points with you. So um, firstly, it's a grant of £7,000 uh, and you're selecting mm. three short films for this particular round of funding, I believe. Yeah. So in terms of like the breakdown of that particular sort of funding, well, how does that work down? When you get the £7,000 sort of like grant, how is that sort of broken down into and where would that kind of money be spent? Yeah, okay. So we will, yeah, we once, let's say we'll talk through a, a um, have you ever wanted to make a film? Why don't we use you as the example, Tom? What's, what's, a, what's a film title we can come up with? Um, I have one. So it was called the, uh, it's called The Last Step. The Last Step. Um, yes. There we go. So the last step we come across, we go, we read it and we go, oh my God, the last step, this short film is amazing. We've got to make it with this guy, Tom Salmon. This is incredible. And we give you that and we would contact you and give you the grant. So we would essentially, we would then say you would have to set up a um, a uh, separate bank account um, and around the um, name of the film and we would help you do that. So that's something that Goldfinch does a lot of as well. So essentially kind of setting up the back end and making sure that, you know, we're not just kind of putting the money into a PayPal account or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but once that's set up, once you've got your, you know, your bank account, um, we would then transfer that money into, uh, into the account and, um, and we would just work with you essentially on making sure you have all the resources you need to make the film. Part of the part of the application process, though, is you would have sent in a budget of how you're wanting to spend that money. So we would already have that in place. You would also have a timeline. We're looking on filming at this point. So I guess once we sort of send that money over, it's all just about pulling the trigger and 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 making those actions fall into place. Right. Um, and and we will be there to help you out. We are we you will have full creative control uh, on the creative side. 
Um, but where, where, where we come in is making sure that all the business side, accounting and whatnot is all going to be taken care of for you. Um, because I think as well, that's probably the area where, when, with the, when you come to filmmaking that new filmmakers struggle with, you know, they don't have any experience. So they're not really sure how that side works. You know, they know how to pick up a camera, you know, they know how to film, they know how to edit and, and premiere or whatever and, and put something together, but it's all the other side of it that sometimes is a little bit more confusing. Uh, and that's an area that we want to um, provide full support for. And for somebody who's never done a film budget before, um, could you maybe give some sort of advice or where they might head to, to sort of put one together? That's a great question, Tom. Uh, we have, in fact, under the Goldfinch umbrella, started a academy, uh, which we are launching uh, on August the 1st. And one of the first courses is on film budgeting uh, with Jack Tarling. So uh, if you wait a few weeks, you can um, sign up to that. Uh, and he will, he actually, part of the course is he talks through a short film budget uh, and kind of how they went through that. And he uses that as an example for how uh, to looking at all the different roles in filmmaking. And uh, yeah, it's a great course. So uh, that's one place. I mean, that's a bit of a self plug really for what we're doing. Um, uh, other places, um, no film school have got some great resources. Um, I mean, the important thing to understand when you're budgeting mm. is, is, and this is why I think Jack teaches the way it does is, is what are all the different roles that need to be fulfilled? Because, you know, that's what the cost is. You've got to pay somebody to fulfill those roles. And then, you know, what are they using? What equipment are they using? And, and, and that. Um, and to understand that putting a budget together is a lot, is a lot easier. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's kind of my very short advice on budgeting. In terms of the money that you raised and how did you become uh, upon the figure of £7,000 and said that that would be enough? And also, are you saying that that might fully fund a short film or is that sort of partial funding and then outside of that people can raise funds on top of that um, if they've got a more sort of ambitious or expensive idea? So uh, the 7000 is a number we we believed that we would be able to uh, internally raise money together for to fund projects. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen short films be put together fully funded for anything from £4,000 up to £7,000. Uh, so we know it fits in that. Um, but we are also, um, the money can be used to partially fund. So someone might have already raised £5,000. And, and often this is very much the case. There is, a, say the budget's 12000 mm. There's some of that money has already come in from the filmmaker or they are going to be able to get the, um, let's say they're hiring a studio or equipment. Um, they've been able to get that essentially on loan for free. Um, so they really actually only need hard money of say £7,000 to, to, you know, but the budget might be like thirteen, mm. fourteen thousand 14000 So yeah, that, that seven grand doesn't have to be, um, you know, the total budget. It mm. can go towards the um, a bigger budget short film. Um, and then also in terms of the uh, genres, I mean, there's a very extensive list. I just mm. wondered in terms of, as sort of Goldfinch as a company, um, I've seen mm -hmm. that they've done run the gamut between doing sort of high concept um, sci-fi projects or thrillers, mm -hmm. um, romantic comedies. Is there anything that you, in terms of the company, sort of leans towards more in, in a sense? Uh, anything that has a commercial sensibility right. is the way I always say it. So if it can, you know, if it, if it has, yeah, commercial potential, regardless of what genre it is, that's what we're looking for. Um, and, you know, there are, so genre-based films tend to be easier to sell. Um, so that's why you'll often see, um, you know, sci-fi, horror and those types of things, especially in the lower budgets being made um, because there is this built-in audience and it, and it is a little bit easier to sell. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that, that's the way, that's the way I always approach all projects. Right. You know, is it, are we, a, does it have some sort of commercial sensibility to it? I'm not looking for projects that are, I, I don't know how, how, what's any, what's a way you can kind of word it, but it's sort of like a, a passion project of sort of, you know, something that no one, it's, it doesn't really have an audience that it's going to connect to. It's a, it's a pure project just for the filmmaker. Like, you know, we're not going to be able to fund films like that because they're not going to be able to sell. We're not going to make a return on our investment. So, and, and you know, we can't be in business. So mm. those, those kind of films is probably what we're not interested in. 
just sort of thinking about like the commercial elements that sort of make up a film for you, what are the sort of big three things you'd look for that would make a short film project or even a feature like a com commercially viable for you? It is a, you can see that the story is going to have an ability to connect to a large audience. Mm. Um, and, you know, and then from a very kind of business point of view, it's like, who is your audience for your film? Like, who is your audience? If you have a clear understanding of who your audience is, then and you can and you can make that very clear well then that's who you're going to be able to sell the film to and it also means who the sales people can sell the film to mm. um so that's a really really important part um, of it and you know maybe you're and you know that's why sometimes documentaries can be on very obscure subjects because there is a huge community around a particular subject like mm. um I mean, I can't think of anything got to my head, but you know, you, you do get these very obscure documentaries and they do well, you know, because there is a community of people out there that want to watch them. Um, so, uh, I mean, that's, that's, that's probably the number one thing is, well, sorry, not the number one thing. One of the big three is, is, is there an audience for this film? Um, is it a good story is like, is number one, everything begins with the story. Um, if you have a good story, you can kind of have slightly ropey um, actors or the production is maybe, ooh, but if it's a good story, people will kind of go, like kind of look past that and it becomes yeah. a sort of by note. Production could have been better, but awesome story. Highly recommend watching it. But if the story is rubbish, it doesn't matter how polished it is and how amazing it is, like, you know, you're going to be struggling um, because, you know, filmmaking at the end of the day is storytelling. And, and it all starts with the story. So that would be the second thing is, well, one of the other threes would be a great story. And third thing, um, I mean, I guess third is for me, is it's, it's something unique. I don't know if everyone uses that word. We're looking for something original and unique. Um, but Anything that's for me personally, and this just extends beyond film, I'm always wanting to work with people that are looking to push the boundaries. Right. Um, and so, you know, if we see someone that is pushing the boundaries in any way, and maybe that's using different tech, you know, we're, we're starting to see people use the uh, Epic Games Unreal Engine for uh, making films, and, and we're pushing people to start using that for making short films. You know, that, that you know, if we see someone sending something like that, we're like, hey, wow, that's cool. Or, mm. you know, I mean, it's been done now, but years ago, um, uh, what was the film that they shot? Is it Tangerine? No. Oh, yeah, but they yeah, shot it on, yeah, it was. on, on the oh, iPhone, yeah. you know. Yeah, and, and, you know, someone said, hey, we're going to film the whole thing on, a, on an iPhone, and, and you know, you'd, you'd be like, okay, you know, that's something unique and great. Like, and you know, that's using a kind of tech thing. So um, something like that is always going to make, is always going to be appealing as well. Following along those sort of lines, in terms of the application mm -hmm. process, you're asked to basically submit three things, which is a log line, synopsis and director's vision. Um, so I'm not going to ask the typical question of like, what's the, you know, what are the best ones you've kind of seen? What's some of the worst ones? And I'm sure you've seen a fair few of them in terms of like, you should just not, you know, if you're going to approach a log line or a synopsis or a director's vision, please just do not do this because I've seen it a thousand times. and It just doesn't work for me. It's. I haven't really seen any bad, I mean, I haven't really seen any bad ones unless it's just, you know, very few, like a very short sentence, like, mm. you know, man loses dog, then contemplate suicide or something. I don't know. Like, I mean, you know, a log line is, you can't, yeah, I haven't really seen any bad ones. So not the same thing. You're sort of generally describing. Um, I think it, it, it's where, where do I see bad things is people having unrealistic expectations on how they think the on how on how they think they can make the film, um, and either whether that's on a technical thing, like right. you know we're going to shoot it in this particular place, and just think there is no way you're going to have access to that. Or uh, and this is probably less so for short films, but it is a bit of a pet peeve for me for feature films. Is you know someone who's an emerging filmmaker, mm. and you know they're listing in their actors. Uh, are we going to go for Tom Hardy or like right. you know just a-list actors and it's like this is n unless you are a personal friend of that actor like that is not going to happen like be realistic find people in your world find people on your level to make this happen um yeah i i think and and then you know going back to the director's vision mm -hmm. 
Um, so yeah, so I, I don't think a log line or synopsis, I don't think it's, it's the, those aren't very hard to put together and it's quite hard to make a bad one. For the director's vision, what we're really looking for is, is an attitude where the filmmaker is, or the director is, is going to make, is like, I'm going to make this film with or without you. Right. You know, like, and, and, and we're like, yeah, like they're, 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 we're looking for people that are, um, you know, want to get up, go and create something and just get on with it. Um, I think that, that have, seeing that in a director's vision is a huge, huge plus. Um, yeah. And yeah, I guess, and just being, and, and being passionate about the story. Mm. Um, I, I guess, so another thing as well, that's quite important to put across um, and across everything that you're doing, whether it's your director's vision um, or your logline, is something that is memorable and easy to tell to somebody else. So, but you know, if you have a story that is that is easy for somebody else to tell your story to another person, then it's going to trans really, uh, translate really well. Because ultimately, you know, and, and less so maybe on the short film fund, but on other bigger projects is, mm. you know, whoever you're pitching to, they're not the final person that's probably going to sign off and everything. There's usually a bunch of people that it's going to go to. And there's probably a bunch of people you don't get to meet who are going to like make a decision on whether or not your film gets made. And if you can create a, a concise pitch or story like, synopsis or log line where someone goes, what's the film about? And the other person can just quickly go, oh, it's amazing. It's about like blah, 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 blah. Mm. And they go, oh, wow, that sounds amazing. If you, that, that's what you need to create. You need to create so someone has that like, I get it. I can mm. pass that information along straight away. That's probably the, the most important thing to do across those three areas. So just following on from that, um, so it's open to UK-based and also uh, international uh, filmmakers. And one of the questions I sort of had for you was, I mean, how does it work if you're a filmmaker from another country and your project's selected for funding in terms of developing and shooting the uh, project in the UK and obviously COVID-19 allowing um, at this point? Yeah, good question. I think we need to actually make that a bit clearer on the website because I think someone else asked, asked that as well yesterday. Um, so we're open internationally but it must be filmed in the UK. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so we're not, um, yeah, you know, you're in Mexico or something. We're not, we're not going to be able to, we're not in a position at the moment, maybe later on down the line, but just because it's something new for us at the moment. Um, yeah, we're not going to be like, here's the money and, and go and make your film and you're in Mexico or, or wherever it may be, Australia or Japan or anything. So, but if you are based, uh, you can be based in the other country uh, mm -hmm. and apply for the story, uh, apply for the fund. But then when it comes to filmmaking, you'll have to come to the UK to actually make the film. And I guess that's something that we have to be factored into the budget, assuming if they had to come over and shoot for, uh, I guess if the shoot's like four days, they'll have to be over here in like accommodation, that kind of thing as well. Yeah, of course, you know, and, and it, it is, it, it would be, you know, suited for the the traveling filmmaker, I guess, or, mm. you know, someone who's, you know, or might have a uh, connection with somebody in the UK that they can stay with. Um, yeah. So, I mean, in, re in reality, it's being that you can, you have to film in the UK, um, means probably 99% of people will be based in the UK. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we did want to just still keep it open to, um, it, you know, people might be based in LA and, and, you know, it's worth applying for it. If I've got a great story and they get the money, um, you know, they're going to be like, you know what, I, I'll come to, you know, I'll mm. come to the UK for the summer. Um, you're right though. And, and, and with the COVID-19 era, like a year ago, that may be less of an issue. Um, whereas now, uh, you yeah, know, with traveling, uh, it is a, there's more considerations to make as well, but we still wanted to, you know, mm. at least keep it open for anyone anywhere. And I just wanted to pick up on terms of filming in the UK. Um, obviously Goldfinch is based in London as a sort of production entity. Um, are you looking beyond shooting different parts of the country, say, um, up North, you know, down, down South, um, in terms of the sort of like locating the sort of like short films, is that something that you've sort of been thinking about in terms of the ones you sort of select of where potentially they could be filmed? Oh, yeah. I mean, ideally we want to, we want to get films from all over the UK. Um, not, yeah. I mean, I, I don't think it's even crossed my mind to just specifically look for ones that are in London. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we've got a, um, there's Highfield Studios, um, which is up in Yorkshire. 
um, which we've shot a bunch of films in. So, I mean, that's outside London. We work there. We're looking to um, get a studio uh, further up north. So, yeah, um, I, do, I don't think it be, it's not a, it isn't a factor that would either be a plus or a negative to making your film. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's more like, is it a good, is it a good film? Is it something unique? Does it have an audience? Whether or not that happens to be in Edinburgh or London, and uh, just sort of thinking on, so somebody's successfully made their sort of short film, it's completed, it's run the short film festival circuit, won lots of awards. So potentially, could a film from the First Flight Short Film Fund be used to qualify for the First Flight's Feature Fund, which is looking for projects up to a million pounds? A hundred percent, yes. Ideally, that is what we that that is the path it would take, um, because we can then take that short film and take it to, uh, the execs can take it out to uh, can take it to all the um, film festivals and the film markets and say, hey, we've got this great filmmaker. They've, they've just done this short. Um, it's won awards, great. So they know what they're doing. They're a great storyteller. Um, and, uh, well, you know, what's the film about? Oh, we want to have a connection with it. Yeah, watch the short film. Like, mm-hmm. you, you know, they, they straight away, they can see the style. They can see the tonality. You know, what kind of music's involved? Um, it's, you know, it's a, it's like a pitch deck on, yeah. you know, on steroids. Um, and yeah, we, that, that's something we definitely want to be pushing through a hundred percent. Um, and also just wondering about if you're going out to sort of the film markets and stuff and you're going to part, I mean, is it potentially partnering up with other sort of like production partners in Europe and in LA? Is that something as well that you'd be thinking about doing for, to fund obviously like a larger version of that short film? Yeah, I mean, uh, the short answer is we're always looking to do partnerships with people. I mean, that's, pr- uh, you know, almost most of the meetings when you do go away is how can we work together with, you know, other production places and, yeah, in LA or, mm. um, you know, we speak to people in Australia, New Zealand, where I'm from. Um, and, yeah, you're always looking for those opportunities to do co productions. Um, and I'm sure as the short film fund matures, it'll be something that we'll be having discussions about with our, you know, with our partners and um, with the people that we meet at the film festivals. And something you sort of mentioned earlier uh, before, and something also that um, Goldfinch does as well, is also you're in game development. And I think there's an option on the website that people can submit ideas for games and stuff. And I just wondered in terms Mm -hmm. of the actual intellectual property or the IP generated from a short film, I mean, is there a potential to maybe move um, that particular sort of story or um, franchise, if it turns into one, into other areas of media as well? Yeah, a hundred percent. And we are looking at ways of diversifying a franchise or, or an IP mm. across um, multiple platforms because, it, you know, it, the, 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 the film world and industry is changing and you need to adapt and you need to have, you know, if you're not, uh, if you're not one of these big studios doing tent poles, um, you need to look at how can we get the most out of an IP. So uh, for example, um, there is a project that we're looking at and it has a, um, a document, it's based on a true story. Um, so mm-hmm. it's going to be done as a, uh, well, we're looking at to do it as a short film documentary. This is one option. Then that can be used to then turn it into a feature version if the doc, if the short film does, um, does well. Um, but then partnering up with a podcasting company to mm-hmm. then, do a podcast about that whole story as well. Um, and as well as that, it then builds up your audience um, in that area. Uh, and then, yeah, is and then, you know, is that something as well that is has a story in which we can speak to the game developers and is there a game involved in that? So, um, yeah, I like moving forward and I don't think it's just us. I think everybody in the industry is looking to do that with their IP. Um, my final question for you is, what's your dream project if money and time wasn't an issue? Um... Well, I mean, personally, I love thrillers, sci-fi, uh, great actors. Um, yeah, with a, with the twist, with an interesting twist at the end. So, um, I've, I'm, I've I've written down a few ideas. Um, I've got an idea which I thought would be great, which is um, in this hyper-connected social media kind of world where we have, where there are sort of um, your friends with everybody from all around the world. Um, if we went back to a, we had essentially like a World War Three, but in a World War Two environment, you know, where you're essentially got a gun and you've got to go run off and pull the trigger on 
a man from another country. Mm. But then, you know, years ago, you didn't have the connections that you'd had these days, did you? Like people were just sort of, um, you know, you communicate with readers. It was as, as smaller communities, and and that whole kind of like, hey, you're on Twitter or Instagram, while still trying to be in the barracks and kind of, I, I don't want to shoot somebody, but I have to do it for my country, and yeah. and just exploring that, like how that would unfold today in this hyper connected community. Um, so yeah, that would be a that would be a uh, great that would be a great film. I mean, personally, like Black Mirror, mm. like anything that's like that black mirror, like sort of set just in the future, like just enough where you can kind of see that it's going to happen potentially. Um, and, but you know, it's either for good or bad or it's, or whatever, any of the stories, I absolutely love them. I'm, I'm always got my eye out for stuff like that. So um, yeah. How can people uh, connect with the short film fund on the website? Where would you sort of direct them to? Uh, right. Go to www.first-flights.com. Uh, and if you visit there in the top right hand corner, you'll see short film fund. Just click on that uh, and you're in. Uh, it gives a brief description of uh, what we've talked about today. Um, then there is a make application um, and uh, just you need to create an account. Uh, and then once you've created the account, you'll see the uh, everything that we need in the application process. So yeah, that's it really. First flights, first hyphen flights.com. Um, go there and you can find everything else out. So there you have it. I had a great time chatting with Nick and you can apply for the First Flight Short Film Fund right now at www.first-flight.com. Just hit the link in the description box below. And the final submission date is October the 1st, 2020. And don't forget to check out more great content at aruba.com. From film reviews, video game hot takes and top 10 videos, why not sign up and become a member and share your passion for all things entertainment on aruba.com today? And you can like and subscribe to I Was Just Wondering Tom Salmon on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify and YouTube and maybe leave a comment or review if you like. And you can support the podcast on Subscribestar at www.subscribestar forward slash I Was Just Wondering Tom Salmon right now. Thank you so much for listening. I've been Tom and I'll catch up with you next episode.